This episode is brought to you in part by Vector Travel. Visit bookings.vectorstays.com and enter the code NYYRECAPS at checkout to get 10% off your next day. Before we get started, here's a few highlights from today's game. Indeed, towing the slab and the boogie down tonight, Jordan Montgomery. Strike the 0-2, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Right back to Montgomery. Nice play. Pedal on the shin guard. And throw it back to Whitey. Fly ball. Deep right. Going back. McKenna on the track. Leaps. See ya. Grounded to short. Torres gets the force and delivers. That's ball four. That forces in a run. It's 2 0 Yankees as Urshela will touch up. Driven deep to left center field. There it goes. See ya. A monster grand slam for Stanton. Swing and a miss. High fly ball deep center going back is Hicks. On the track, he'll make the play. There's a base hit to right field. Bruce scores. Everybody else moves up. Get your comments ready. Here's Derek with the post-game reaction. Ball game over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. What's up, everybody? That's the type of Yankee game that we all want to watch every night. Dominating pitching from my man, Gumby. Jordan Montgomery, absolutely outstanding tonight, making me look like a genius for verbally fellating him for the last six months. Just let me go over my notes real quick from the game. I've been jotting down things from the entire game. In the first inning, I wrote down great soft contact from Jordan Montgomery. He obviously had a really nice start. Uh, Judge pulled his hands in really nicely in the bottom of the first and picked up a single. John Carlos Stanton had a really, really bad at bat early in the game. It was kind of a, a weak hack, but that was not a precursor to things to come. Jordan Montgomery had another easy inning in the second inning. I noticed he was throwing the changeup a lot. I noticed he was throwing the curveball a lot, but that changeup is really good, and that's something I'm going to get more into in the game day show tomorrow. A lot of the Yankees pitchers are throwing a lot more changeups. Uh, somebody tweeted at me that Garrett Cole threw... I think it was 14 changeups on, on opening day, but all 68 all of last season. So he's upped his changeup usage. You, you know how much I've waxed poetically about Domingo Herman and Jonathan Loisiga's changeups. Johnny Lasagna! Uh, third inning, again, two changeups for strikeouts, and then he struck out the side with a uh, curveball. Uh, Urshela had a couple of weak hacks, and it seemed like there was something up with his back feet. It looks like he's just kind of out of whack at that point. Uh, bottom of the fourth, Judge pops one up to right field, but it goes out of the park. That's just his strength, folks. That's He was late on that fastball. It was a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, and he's late on the pitch, and he gets behind it and just pops it up, basically, but he's so strong that that ball carries out of the ballpark. Unbelievable. Uh, Torres picks up a base hit, and then Sanchez swung through a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, his second strikeout swinging of the game. Uh, in the top of the fifth, I noticed Glaber Torres had a really quick shovel pass on a uh, potential double play ground ball, but it ended up the runner was safe at first. But I thought Glaber Torres looked really nice. It reminded me of when you're playing like a new episode or new edition of MLB The Show, and you see like an added animation, like an improved animation. Uh, and I was just like, wow, Glaber wasn't that quick last year, and he just looked good at shortstop tonight. Uh, Monty pitched out of a jam. He was at 58 pitches and 44 strikes through five. And then in the bottom of the fifth, of course, Giancarlo murders a pitch for a grand slam. That basically put the game out of reach. I thought there were some good at-bats around the Giancarlo slam. Uh, obviously, Aaron Hicks working the count a little better. Still not hitting the ball really well, but working the count at least. And then Monty comes back out in the sixth and has a great shutdown inning. So once you put some runs on the board, you want to come out and shut down the opposing lineup immediately. You don't want to give them a chance. Uh, so really nice job by Jordan Montgomery. I want to welcome everybody to the chat. Uh, this is my first post-game live stream of the season. 
I've been kind of getting ramped up. I did a couple of watch parties, but this is going to be the format after most games. I'm just going to hop on after the game is over, do a little bit of a live stream. And then the rest of my content will be morning of game days where I do a kind of a, a quick video between five and ten minutes about you know what the what the storylines are for the game. You can always tell it's mine because I'm the guy who uses all the Yankee pictures on the thumbnail, the little you know heads, the little headshots. So, all right. So, Devox says, I enjoyed watching them for once this season. I see you, Devox. I see ya. I'm going to move these highlighted comments back down. Uh, Roman Empire says, Jordan should be our number one starter. So, obviously, Cole is, is the number one starter. Cole is the best pitcher on the team. But I've been saying all along, Jordan Montgomery is one of my favorite pitchers on the staff. I just love the way he induces soft contact, and he does that because, as you see, he gets a lot of movement on the ball. The changeup, the curveball, and then he can also buzz you in there at 93, 94 miles an hour a lot of the time. Uh, and then uh, Jaden Sanchez says, John Carlos' grand slam was an absolute missile. And I don't know if, if, if a missile is a strong enough word. It reminded me of those UFO videos where it's just like a streak. Like you see this light hovering in the sky, and it's just a streak in fact, I think I found my uh, my game day skit for tomorrow, my intro skit. Uh, but that was absolutely a monster, monster home run. Uh, I didn't see anything to be concerned about with Judge. Daniel Calderon says, um, and I agree with that. I think they pulled Judge because they wanted him to go out of the game uh, to get you know a, a few innings off. It was a blowout game. You can put Mike Tockman in there. He's a good defensive player. And also, Mike Tockman needed to get some at-bats. I think that was his first at-bat of the season. Uh, so THG, yeah, calling me out. I'm gonna give you the air horn for that because that was a good one. Uh, so my Domingo Herman take was that he was gonna be dynamite and possibly a 20 game winner, and he still might be. I think he's gonna still have a very nice season. But um, I've always been up on both Domingo Herman and Jordan Montgomery. If you come to this channel a lot, you know that the pitchers that I talk the most about, that I I love the most, are Jordan Montgomery and Jonathan Loisega. Those are the two guys that I love to watch. They're both such great, just pitchers with just the the heat, the changeup, the control. Uh, just both of these guys are just so much fun to watch. And and Jordan Montgomery not so much on the heat, just more control and keeping guys off balance. Uh, Ryan Fellow says, "Do we kick keep Hicks in the three hole?" Well, tonight was a good example of why you put him in the three hole because he worked a really really tough at bat. He wasn't going to swing at something out of the zone. And he sets it up for Giancarlo to hit that big grand slam. Uh, Ulysses says, was Judge good today? Well, he hit a home run and he had a base hit up the middle. I thought it was uh, interesting in the first inning or second inning, whenever he hit his first, I think it was the first inning. Uh, there was a pitch, it was inside, inside part of the plate. And he pulled his hands in and ripped it through the hole between where the shortstop and second baseman were playing. Both were on the left side of the infield. Uh, but he still ripped it hard enough that he got it through the shift. But what was good was that he didn't get jammed on it. He got the barrel to it, right? The thing about Judge this season is he's been getting jammed on those inside pitches. So I thought that was a great sign. I actually tweeted it uh, right when it happened. Uh, uh, let's see. Nikki Central says, thoughts on them slotting in Ty on a day late and going with Cole tomorrow? So they're doing this to kind of take it easy on Jamison Tyone, but also they're doing it to keep Garrett Cole on regular rest because you want your ace – in a good rhythm and you want to keep him uh, to where, and it's not just tomorrow's start. You want him lined up for the next start and, 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 and the start after that. So they've thought this through very carefully. I'm um, spitting. I saw the spit. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, Jordan Montgomery was great tonight and Garrett Cole should give the Yankees an above 500 record tomorrow because I think he's going to dominate the Orioles. And then we get to see Jamison Tyone on Wednesday night. And by the way, Wednesday night, I'm going to be doing a live watch party with my man, Patrick Hennessy from Unhinged Yankees. Uh, a few of you guys have actually uh, uh, requested that. So I invited him on for this Wednesday uh, in place of the 643 DP. Uh, Supermassive says Stanton bat flip rating 1 to 10. I don't know. Let's watch it. Let's watch it again. Uh, let's, let me fast forward to it. That was Judge. So let's go to Stanton. Okay, so we see Hicks taking the walk here. Let's watch this bat flip. I don't know if I've got it in slow-mo here. Oh, yeah, he does the thing. Yeah, he did throw it. I remember that. That was a pretty good bat flip. I'd say uh, I'd say an 8, 8.5, maybe a 9. Pretty good. 
I, what I like is when he hits it and he holds the bat out, like he points at it after the fact. Like, I just hit that ball right there over the bullpen. And it's kind of like when you hit a ball really well in golf and you kind of bring the, the club back and point. Uh, but, yeah, great, great job from John Carlo. 471 feet. I actually tweeted immediately when it landed. I said 470 feet at least, and I was off by one foot. I always try and judge – before it, I think it's more fun to try and guess what it is and then wait for them to announce it than to immediately look up the distance. I know you can look it up, but to me, that's like one of the little mini games I play with myself. Uh, <laughs> that sounded bad uh, during the baseball game. All right. On that note, uh, Gary called a great game tonight, by the way. Joe Saban. Uh, yeah, I wanted to mention that. Uh, look out for John Means from Borg. That's a great point. Uh, John Carlos Stanton, actually, a couple years ago when he pulled his bicep, you might remember it was the first or second game of the season. It was pretty early in the season. John Carlos swung at a changeup and was fooled so so badly that he pulled his bicep muscle. It was a really cold day. Uh, I do remember that. And, and, and means I have him in my MLB The Show franchise. He's really, really tough. Straight changeups all day long, all day long. But... Um, yeah, Dvac says Monty was great. He looked like before the Tommy John surgery, his command was great, attacking guys in the zone. Yeah, what to me, what's different about Jordan Montgomery now versus Jordan Montgomery last year is the movement. His When he first came up, he had a lot of bite on all of his pitches. It seemed like last year he had a little bit more heat, but he didn't seem like he had the crispness of his slider or his breaking ball, curveball. Uh, definitely didn't have the change up that he's throwing this year. Definitely wasn't as good as it is this year. That that was one of the reasons that when Corey Kluber was struggling with his breaking ball in spring training, I thought that there's a possibility that it could carry over into the season because, you know, that's a field pitch. When you're not pitching a lot, it can be tough to get in a rhythm of throwing that breaking ball every time exactly the way you want it. So, I mean, these guys were just terrific tonight. Ruben Cruz with the Dono Hype. I'm going to do the air horn. Uh, loved Montgomery since uh, uh, 2017. I love it. I, yeah, I mean, he's he, uh, he says he should have pitched the seventh and maybe the eighth. I'll tell you why he didn't, because you needed to get Luis Sessa in the game. Luis Sessa is not a guy that you generally throw in close situations. Although, by the way, Luis Sessa looked tremendous tonight. Mike King looked tremendous yesterday. Some of these guys that I ragged on in my roster roster preview, and I'm glad to be eating crow. I'm glad to be eating crow. I try and keep it, you know, honest. And if I think if I don't believe in somebody, I'm going to be honest about it. And coming into the season, I did not believe in Mike King. I said it openly. And I've never been a huge fan of Luis Sessa. I just don't think he pitches well against good hitters. But his stuff is really good. And he was really crisp tonight. And by the way, Chapman, he looked filthy in the night. I wrote down Chapman filthy AF. Uh, it's hard to uh, – it's my notes, whatever. But, uh, yeah, air horn is a solid noise. It is. I agree with you. Yes, I agree. Uh, thanks, Squisher. Squisher says he's a big fan. So, yeah, I mean, obviously this was a big win for the Yankees. Uh, looking great. And, by the way, I love these 630 games because then I can get on and chat with you guys after the game and I'm not – super ridiculously tired there's nothing worse than those 7 30 games that start well they start at like seven maybe there's like a rain delay or you know the game goes until midnight and i'm trying to get on here and make a video so this year i've kind of made up my mind uh i'm just going to do the games that i want to do i'm not going to do a post game on the really really late night games but um uh roman empire says you know it's a good day when the yankees win by seven and the the Red Sox are losing by seven. Ouch. <laughs> Joshua Cologne says Chappie's slider was extremely sharp. Yeah, it was breaking like a big time curveball. It was breaking kind of like a almost like an eleven to four break on a clock. It was excellent. Luke Hughes says he's been challenged. Luke. Always with the dono. We're going to get the dono hype going. Lori C says, agree, Johnny. I called him Cesspool. Hating on my man Cessa, but we got to give him his props tonight. Cessa was absolutely tremendous. I cannot hit curveball. Straight ball, I hit it very much. Curveball. That's our friend. Uh, THG says he called Jonathan Holder the dumpster. 
the thing about Jonathan Holder is he's got the worst possible name for a relief pitcher because when you come in with a lead and you hold it, it's called a hold. So you expect – I expected Jonathan Holder's name to be changed to Jonathan Home Run because this guy was absolute – just just garbage. Just garbage on the mound. Uh, Yankees bats need to wake up against quality pitching. Well, hey, look, um, you, you can only hit against who you play against that night. Sure, I would have loved that they beat Ryu. But, hey, look, they won tonight. I think we should focus on the positive for the, for the night. Throw ourselves a little party over there. Junior B says Mets about to blow the two-run lead in the eighth inning. Uh, Wes says, how do you feel about Aaron Boone? I have mixed feelings. Yeah, he does have some some interesting moves. I feel like maybe I would like him to go with his gut a little bit more. Uh, I'm not a fan of the move with J-Hap and Davey Garcia in Game 2 of the Division Series last year. I thought he listened to the analytics guy when he could have gone with uh, his his gut there. I, I think you got to listen to your players. Uh, J-Hap was not on board with, with that move. I mean, he ultimately agreed to do it, but he pushed back when they brought that up. If I, I say if you're going to pitch Jay Happ, then pitch Jay Happ. If you're going to pitch uh, Davey Garcia, then pitch Davey Garcia. So I like Aaron Boone for the most part. I love how he defends his guys. I love his on-field rants. Uh, but uh, occasionally he makes a uh, kind of a weird move. Um, all right. Okay, so we're, we're pretty good here. I think we've got... Uh, you know, a, a pretty good group of guys on here. So we're going to watch the highlights one more time, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more, and then I'm going to call it a night. Before we get started, here's a few highlights from today's game. game. Indeed. Toeing the slab and the boogie down tonight. Jordan Montgomery. Strike the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Right back to Montgomery. Nice play. Pedal on the shin guard. And throw it back to Whitey. Fly ball. Deep right. Going back. McKenna on the track. Leaps. See ya. Grounded to short. Torres. Gets the force. And delivers. That's ball four. That forces in a run. It's 2 nothing Yankees as I hardly agree. touch up. Driven deep to left center field. There it goes. See ya. A monster grand slam for Stanton. Ball game over. Yes, All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. My man Patrick Hennessy is going live over on Unhinged New York, so go check him out. I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate everybody for watching. Have a good night. Yankees win this one 7-0. We'll see you tomorrow for Yankees game day. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. 